Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grow My Etsy Shop podcast. Hey, so today we're going to be talking about taxes. Uh, taxes are one of the things that make owning a business not very fun. Um, I, if you're anything like me, it's all about trying to show the government that you are making as little money as possible so that you don't get hosed over. Um, I'm going to start this episode by saying I'm not a CPA, nor did I do my own taxes. And so I'm not someone who's super qualified to talk about this subject, but I do think it's important that there are some basics, I guess, that we need to understand um, as Etsy sellers to know what we should be keeping track of, what should we, what we should have our eye on, and also taxes as we're kind of keeping track of what we're doing. They kind of go hand in hand with our inventory and knowing our inventory is extremely important. So that's what we're going to break down today is kind of just like how to track and watch our inventory. And then, of course, what falls under different categories and what we should be really keeping an eye on so that we can um, not get hosed over during tax season. Okay, so let's break down what a handmade seller is and some of the phrases so that we can understand and see the value of our inventory. So as Etsy shop owners, you buy raw material and then you create a product from that raw material and you sell that product. So that's different than someone who buys shirts and then resells those shirts. If you were someone who bought shirts and resold them, uh, your shirts would be the inventory. In our case, it's your materials that become your inventory. So all the stuff that you use and make products with, that is your inventory. So if let's just say you took, you make nutcrackers and so the wood and the paint and all that kind of stuff, you're going to, all that falls under inventory. And that is what is used to make your product. So something you want to kind of keep in mind is when you buy more materials, your inventory value is going to go up. And when you sell your products that takes the materials to make it, your inventory value is going to go down. And so there's a number that you need to know. And it starts at the the start of every year and at the end of every year. Essentially, the government's going to ask you how much inventory do you have um, when you start the year. And then when you end the year, they're going to say, how much do you have left? And that number, need, you need to know that number. And so whether that's if you just have a few SKUs, it's pretty simple. You would just probably start at the beginning of the year, count it out, and then count it out at the end of the year. If you're someone who has over 100 SKUs and all this kind of stuff, then you're going to need some sort of um, Excel spreadsheet or uh, QuickBooks or using something that's going to help you kind of keep track of that. Now, if you're completely like, oh, I don't really keep track of this or this is like your first year or whatever, you, you need to understand that inventory is the worst. And I think I've said this in other podcast episodes. It's the worst. Um, it's either, and especially when you're trying to like find materials and all this kind of stuff, it's like you're trying to find, oh, who can I get the cheapest materials from from the smallest amount Um like I don't want to buy a billion of them because I'm brand new and so I just want to find like to buy only 10 but I want the cheapest price for my 10 and then as you get bigger it's like okay how can I find you know like in my case I was trying to buy what I felt like was a ton of material but I was talking to suppliers that provided for huge chain companies and so I was just a small fish to them and it was hard to get in front of them and and so just know that as annoying as inventory is um, you need to have a system that watches your inventory. And I'm going to kind of break down some reasons why you need to have a system that goes over your inventory. Okay, so the number one thing when it comes to tracking your inventory or why you need to track your inventory is because you actually do need to track your inventory. Like when someone buys a product from you, you're, there's a two-way promise that's taking place. You're saying, I'm going to send you the product that you see in the picture and the description that I use to describe this product is going to match that. That's the promise that you make. The second thing promise that you're making is that I'm going to send it to you in a timely fashion. So if someone is ordering or you start to see a lot of growth and they're buying things that you don't have and then you're like, hey, sorry, actually we sold out of that. I didn't know this or I'm missing this piece or I actually have to run to the store and I can't go to the store tomorrow before I get the supplies that I need to make that. So that's going to push their shipping back. You're starting to kind of Uh, violate that promise that you made. And so by keeping track of inventory, you're able to just kind of come in and check and be able to see like, oh, I'm running low on X, Y, Z. And so right now you may just open up a drawer and look into something. But as you get bigger or as you start to outsource what you're doing, that you need a system in place to be able to know like I bought a thousand of X, Y, Z's and we've sold 
500 of those units and that means that I'm probably low on, let's just use tags for example. I have a thousand tags, I've sold 700 of my products, I have 300 tags left, it's probably time for me to reorder, that reordering may take two weeks, all that kind of stuff. That's the kind of stuff that you just, you can't just wait till they run out and be like, oh, I don't have tags anymore or whatever it may be. So keeping track of your inventory is going to help you keep track of your inventory and be able to fulfill the promise that you make with your customers. So another reason you want to track your inventory is for profitability purposes. If you're not, uh, a lot of us, we buy in bulk or we buy ahead of time. And so let's just stick with the tag scenario. Let's say that you need to order those thousand tags and that that's going to cost you a hundred bucks. Well, you need to know that you didn't just lose a hundred bucks. And that's how we can sometimes see it. Like, oh my gosh, I didn't, I'm just going to make a hundred dollars less this month because I got to buy stupid tags. But we need to know that and look at our business for uh, a long-term thing. It's not just here for one month. And that tags, as we sell those thousand products, is actually going to be only pennies compared to what we're paying here. And so when we kind of have an idea of our inventory and we're able to, and we're buying products ahead of time so that we don't run out, it helps us know exactly how much our product is making us. And so instead of just being like, whoa, I don't know what happened. I spent $900 this month and I only sold $700 worth of products. We can instead say, no, 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 I spent $900 and that's going to make me profitable for the next year. And sure, I took a hit this month, but that doesn't mean I'm not making money or I need to change my pricing or I need to go out of business or whatever it may be. It just kind of helps us keep the sales pointed in the right direction. Another way that this is helpful is that we get to see sales patterns. So if you're tracking your inventory, that means that you're, you legit have something, whether that's pen and paper, whether that's spreadsheet, that you're seeing how much is going out the door. So you'll be able to see, oh, wait, these are kind of my staple products. Like these ones have a consistent sale patterns where these ones seem to be really great in the summer or not so well around Christmas time or whatever it may be. You'll start to see that pattern. And it's not just a gut feeling, which I think a lot of Etsy sellers do. They just kind of know like, oh, this is my main product. And you can say, well, how much of it do you sell a month? Or is there a month that's bigger? And they're like, well, I'm not quite sure. It just kind of seems like it's consistent. But when you actually look at the numbers and they're in front of you because you're tracking your inventory, you're able to see that pattern. And then you can predict like, oh, okay, I can see that this product seems to do really well in the summer. So now it's spring. I'm going to invest some money in this summer or find other products that are similar to this. And it, you know, it can help train your eye. It can help forecast what's coming. It's just a great way to be able to kind of learn your sales pattern of your store. So the last reason I kind of have for why you want to track your inventory, um, this one's not as common, but it helps in seeing that all of your products are being used or all of your materials are being used properly. And so sometimes, like for me, I was in the, uh, I've shared this before, I sold nursing covers on Etsy. And we ended up moving into a plus size nursing cover. We were getting a lot of reviews or comments from people kind of saying like, hey, is there a bigger option? And we were kind of like, no, but we can make one. So we kind of went through and we hacked away that we could create one that was a bit bigger. The problem is, is that it cut our fabric usage up higher. So when we were originally pricing them, we wanted to just make it a few extra dollars more than what our regular was. But we were using so much more fabric, not just because we were making them bigger, but because we were wasting fabric that it, we ended up having to raise our price up higher than we thought. So because we were tracking our inventory and because we were kind of going through all the materials that were coming in, we were able to see like, oh, the, our fabric cost is actually much higher than we anticipated for our plus size. And in case you're wondering, we ended up using that fabric to create other things and then it was able to bring our cost down for the plus size. So fun fact for you. Okay, so now that we see the importance of tracking our inventory, let's take this one step further. Um, Let's talk about the difference between supplies and materials. So supplies are any material that you use that's not directly used for the product. So things like envelopes, uh, shipping labels, bubble bubble wrap, um, that kind of stuff. Let's Let's just say you sell nutcrackers. Then, you know, envelopes are not used to make the nutcracker. Shipping labels are not used to make the nutcracker. Bubble wraps are not, etc. You get that. Um, another uh, way that this could be supplies is that it can. It's something that you can't measure. So for the nutcracker uh, scenario, it would be like glue would be a great example of that. You can't measure how much glue you're actually using to make a nutcracker. Um, 
uh, a tool that you use could be another example of that. And so like, there's just things that like, it doesn't add up that it's per unit. Oh, I use exactly three cents worth of glue each time. Like we just kind of don't know that you want to know that kind of in the back of your mind of like how many nutcrackers can you make with one bottle of glue? But that's not something that you necessarily need to have in your um, materials. It's more under the supplies. So once you kind of have your supplies, now I kind of like break this into like, it's like, how much money do you make? How much did you, does Etsy think you made? And then it's how much did it cost to make that product? And then what are your direct expenses? And then what are your indirect expenses? So your direct expenses should, uh, for a lot of us, fall under um, our COGS, which is the cost that it takes to make a product. Your indirect expenses can be things more like, uh, yeah, a tool that you used to make the product. Or um, let's even go as far as to say, like, let's say you work in an office space in your home. Uh, you're able to take some of the rent or or your mortgage off of your home because you're using it as a building space for what you're doing. That's an indirect expense uh, cost of business. So where most of your costs are going to come from, though, is the material side. And so the definition of what materials are, which fall on, uh, which falls under the category of inventory, which can fall under the category of cost of goods sold, just kind of clump those all together. It's going to make your life way easier. So materials are anything that you use to directly manufacture your product. So to stick with the, um, the nutcracker, like let's say the wood that you use. Let's say you have to buy $400 worth of wood to get 20 nutcrackers. You would do the math to know this is how much wood I buy. This is how much I, nutcrackers I can make. And then anytime you sell that nutcracker, you know I spent X amount of dollars in wood to make that nutcracker. Uh, nails could be one, paint could be another, anything that you're using to directly make the nutcracker. So for the nail scenario, you would just say, all right, it takes 10 nails to make my nutcracker. I buy them in bulk for 500 each. My 500 costs me $10. And then you just divide what that would be, how much is per nail. And then you would just add that into your cost of materials. That's going to fall under your inventory. So now let's break down how this all kind of flows together. So once we kind of understand like, okay, we have, and we all know this, I make money from Etsy. I sell products and I make money. I then have my COGS, which is, it's called cost of goods sold or like what each product costs. You need to know that number. What does each product cost me? And then every time that's sold, so you need to know how many products you sold in a year and how much it costs to make those products. Now, this is where it can get a little tricky. I'm going to break this down into, and we're going to talk about some numbers. I'm going to use really basic numbers though. I hate it when people are like, let's say you made $6,425 and you're like, oh my gosh, dude, that's a crazy number. So let's just make this super easy. Let's say that you sell your nutcrackers for $100 and let's say that it costs you $40 to make a nutcracker. Okay. So that means that every time someone, your phone goes cha-ching, is landing in your pocket because it costs you $40. Now that doesn't mean all $60. Keep in mind, Etsy takes a cut. You might be paying for Etsy advertising, all this kind of stuff. And then blah, 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 blah. So let's just say this. Let's say that you spent $400. You're going to launch your nutcracker business. You spend $400 on supplies, on all the things you need to make your nutcrackers, which means you can make 10 nutcrackers this year. So you want to sell 10 nutcrackers because that's going to clean out your inventory. So you spend $400 and at the end of the year, you sold one. So you you made a hundred bucks. That's what, that's what Etsy is going to report. So you're going to report my shop. I made a hundred dollars this year. What's going to happen now? Not really. It has to be like 400 or whatever for the, anyway, let's just keep it easy. That's what's being reported. $100. The truth of the matter is, how much did you spend to make that nutcracker? $40 is how much you spent. But you spent $400 in inventory. So this is where things get tricky. So now keep up with me here. So what's going to happen is the government's going to say, hey, we're going to tax you on that 100 bucks. You made 100 bucks. We want our percentage of that 100 bucks. And you're going to say, wait, 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 wait. I spent way more money than I made. You can't be taxing me. And they're going to go, okay, well, how much did you make? 
this is where it gets tricky because it's tempting to say, well, I spent $400. And they're going to say, okay, you spent $400 on all this stuff for your business and you only made $100. And you're going to go, yep. And they're going to say, oh, okay, well, you don't owe any taxes then. And you're going to say, that's right. The end. Now, that sounds like a pretty good deal. Like you just got out of a, a get out of jail free card. But here's what's, what you just did is the next year when you sell nine nutcrackers, you say you get your wings and you figure it out and you sell nine nutcrackers, what's going to happen is the government's going to say, all right, good job. You, you made $900. You sold nine nutcrackers. You made $900. And you're going to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't, that's not all profit. In fact, it cost me $40 per nutcracker to make. So it's actually only 540. I think that's the right number. $540 I made in profit. So please don't tax me on the full 900. I only have $540 in my pocket. They're going to say pound sand because you wrote off all that inventory last year as a business expense. And so that is what you don't want to do because what will happen is anytime you ever have a really good year, you're going to buy a lot of products and a lot of inventory and you're going to really stock up because you got the money to do it. And then let's say the next year it's not as good. Well, you just wrote off all your inventory as an expense. So that's what you want to avoid. Here's how you want to do it. You want to say, I sold $100 or I made $100. I sold one nutcracker. I made $100 and it cost me $40 to make that product. And then they're going to say, okay, so you made 60 bucks and you're going to go, yep. And then you're going to use your CPA or your accounting skills if you have them to kind of say, but I also had some other costs here, you know, my my electricity, my rent, like those are the kind of things that you can write off this tool that I got, blah, 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 blah. So these other indirect expenses you can kind of, and they can, they work in weird orders. Like uh, we don't need to get into all that. That's where the things get technical. And quite frankly, it's even a little fuzzy for me, but what you're doing is you're just bringing that number down as low as you can. So by the end, you know, you want, um, you want the government to say, oh, so you only made $40 from that $100 sale. And you could say yes. And then they'll say, okay, well, we'll, we're going to tax you on the $40. And you go, that's fair. So that's what your ultimate kind of end goal is. If you are always reporting your COGS, then as your business gets bigger, you're just reporting that your inventory and the cost of what it takes to make a product. And so if you sold 900 nutcrackers, you're going to pay, you're going to be able to deduct $40 from each of those nutcrackers. And then that's what you're, that's what you're going to pay your taxes on instead of, well, I paid for the year before a ton of inventory and I wrote it all off. And now I sold a bunch my next year. And now I'm paying three times the amount of taxes that I would have paid had I done this properly. You need to understand what COGS are, what your cost is, and then have some sort of a system that breaks that down. Realistically, and I hope I kept this as simple as I could, watching your inventory is a great way to do it. As long as you know how much it costs to make a nutcracker and you keep track of your inventory, then what happens is in the start of the year, you tell the government, hey, I've made, I have 500 nutcrackers in inventory and I sold 200 of them during the year and now I have 300 did I say 500 now I have 300 left that's going to be the best way to do your taxes and so as long as you kind of put those together you can hand that to an accountant you can go through QuickBooks or you can go through like TurboTax and all that kind of stuff and kind of I don't recommend that I would definitely as Etsy shop owners I would try to find a CPA um I know that they can be somewhere between $500 to $100. It's just a matter of a lot. Usually it's just a lot of, I know someone, I got a guy, I got a friend, I got an uncle who can kind of give you a deal and that can be a write off to your business as well. So it's not even costing you straight money out of your business to pay for a CPA. So I hope this has been helpful heading into tax season. Good luck to everyone. Don't let the government just steal all your money. You guys work hard. You are, you, you're creating a product that people want. Some of you employ people and you should be rewarded for it. So Keep working hard. Uh, we'll see you guys around.